Smokey, how did actually Smokey start? Do you remember? Have you been around since the very first set of members, or am I right or wrong? Oh, you're correct. I've been there all from school. We we were a schoolboy band, and um, when we left school, we uh, went our own ways and went to our jobs that we were supposed to do. I was going to be a lithographic printer. I hadn't quite my, signed my uh, apprenticeship at that time, but I'd done all the exams. It was that process, and um, and <laughs> I don't know. The the guys knocked on my door three times, and on the third time, I just said, you know. Okay, I'll join the band. They wanted to do it for real, and it's—I mean, I've always wanted kids, you know, at school. We we wanted that, so I think something just told me, you what, know. What year was it? This would be '67, and we became professional. Uh, well, we say musicians, but I—I I think it's more like magicians because we've got away with it for so long. Um, nine, June the first, 1968, we became professional musicians. So. And then we had various names for the band, you know. We were only doing pubs and clubs and things, you know. And then uh, what happened then? Um, we went through a few record contracts and got nowhere with it. So there's a lot of records out there that nobody have heard of by Smokey, but it wasn't Smokey. We were called something else, you know, three or four different names. I think the record companies were using as a, a tax loss, you know. <laughs> and and uh, so... And then finally we, we, we saw that um, Nicky Chin and Mike Chapman were looking for a new band after Sweet and Susie Quattro, Mud, yeah. etc. Um, so we sent them some of our songs, we recorded very, I wouldn't say they were fine recordings, they were pretty rubbish and they, they came back to us and said, no, thank you. But our manager, Bill Hurley, at the time, he just kept pestering and pestering and pestering. And, 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 and in the end, they just said, come on, we've got to get this guy out of our hair. You know, so we'll go. Okay, when are you playing in London? Well, we weren't playing in London at all because we were Yorkshire boys and we we hadn't travelled far out, you know, outside of Yorkshire. And uh, so our manager set up a a gig in a, a really a tourist um, club called Hatchets in Piccadilly. And uh, I don't think there were any English people in there. It was just all foreign folks, you know, paying top dollar then they were for the beers, you know. Um, and uh, so we did the gig, and Mike Chapman came to it. And we were, we didn't really know what he looked like, you know, but we knew he had a, um, he smoked a, a cigarette with a, a cigarette holder. Okay. So all night long, our, our eyes were, sca you know, peeling at the, the, the audience looking for a cigarette holder. Uh, I couldn't find it. And uh, in the end, we thought, well, maybe he didn't come. And just at that point, um, he came to the dressing room and said, I loved it. He says, I really loved it. He said, but now we've got to... He said, get rid of the black clothes. We always wore black clothes. He says, get rid of the black clothes. That's what he said. And he said, no, I need my partner, Nicky, to come and see. So where are you playing next in the south? Well, we weren't again, you know. So we set up another place uh, uh, in East Grinstead in Sussex uh, called Clouds uh, Nightclub. And uh, we, we did that. And Nicky came. And uh, he just said, if Mike likes it, I love it. And then <coughs> that was it and we were signing a contract with them a few weeks later. Some win, some lose. 
She cried over and over. Oh, Daddy, I love you, you know, and I think it's the moonlight. She looked so fine, well, she looked all right, and she moaned, Oh, Daddy, move over. Oh, baby, you know what I like, and I think it's the moonlight. Turn to 